I'm Neme Raut, I'm a journalist from Estonia, and I'm very happy to welcome here in Tallinn four foreign ministers from three Baltic countries and from Poland. After COVID epidemic, it's always nice to see people in person. So welcome, and the first question for everybody is the obvious question at these times. What is the situation like in your country at, at the moment regarding the pandemic? And let's start from Poland, from there, and then move up to Estonia, please. The situation with pandemic is under control, so we are in the process of lifting restrictions concerning economy and closing uh, the uh, social, uh, so to say, life uh, to a certain extent. We are at the uh, third stage. The number of uh, persons inflicted by the pandemic is, is uh, going down, so there is a hope that we will come to normal situation soon. Is the border open between Poland and Baltic states? We introduced some uh, also measures concerning the possibility of uh, crossing the border. First of all, for people working in the European Union, for EU citizens, so they can come, go and come back to Poland without quarantine. Quarantine is still uh, obligatory for persons uh, coming from abroad. Uh, there is also a possibility to pass uh, Polish territory uh, by uh, Lithuanian, Estonian and Latvian citizens going to Germany, for example. So transit is open. Uh, still uh, visiting as a tourist, it's still to be decided. Uh, it is not yet uh, possible. We are comparing uh, and we are looking at the situation concerning the uh, pandemic and we are waiting for the decision and recommendation recommendations of the Minister of Health in Poland concerning that matter. Thank you. What is the situation like in Lithuania? Um, you know, we are, three of us in this Baltic bubble association are about uh, compatible, so why we are meeting and discussing these issues, I believe it's under control. And uh, I, I do not agree that this is already over, as you said. It's still, still here, but uh, we are getting off uh, out of the situation and doing that in coordination. So we're happy that we're with us also Polish minister. So in the future, we'd like to extend our bu bubble, uh, doing that uh, not too speeding too much and doing that carefully, responsibly. But uh, I believe it's the way to go. What we'd like to see also in the European Union, more coordination. Uh, at least if, sef if second wave will come, who knows, uh, maybe we'll be better prepared. So that's our example we'd like to show to others and share our experience among ourselves. Latvia. Well, I very much agree with my colleagues that it's not over. I think that we are learning how to live with this COVID-19 for the time being. Uh, things are actually quite okay in Latvia. We have low number of, of uh, infected people. I can congratulate Estonia that I heard that you didn't have any positive cases in the last 24 hours. We had the same thing on Sunday, but now we have again five new infections. So it shows that actually we have to be very vigilant and we should not uh, be complacent. We are resuming international flights and as we speak right now, the government of Latvia is introducing the same policy as Estonia and Lithuania. It was agreed last week to allow people from EU countries with the similar uh, epidemiological situation to visit Latvia without 14 days of isolation. And uh, of course, it's great to have uh, Jacek Čaputovic here because uh, for us, I think the diplomacy, even in a digital environment, uh, still needs to be conducted in person. And I think that we covered much more topics than we would ever do that via video conference. And Estonia. We feel it's almost like over because the sunny weather and the, the feeling in Tallinn is that we passed this dangerous time. Yes, well, I, I said also during lunchtime to colleagues that psychologically, particularly in our region, it was easier to us to face that uh, uh, challenge uh, during the early springtime. If we would have it, have it in autumn or wintertime, it would be far more... Uh, uh, indeed, full of fatigue in that sense. But now, uh, spring always, uh, blossoming of uh, flowers, trees gives a certain optimism, what is so gladly needed to all nations. And I'm truly grateful to my colleagues to, to, uh, for coming uh, in, to Estonia. And our message is clear and sound. 
well, that we sound uh, by each other uh, as we did it uh, during the harsher moments in, of that crisis, but now also when Europe faces uh, economic challenges, security challenges, and also the, we have to jointly find out the way how to uh, ease the restrictions. Because for a cat, it's more easier uh, to climb up the tree than go uh, down the tree. Very good, but uh, let's talk about very specific thing that is discussed in the world. Corona passes, antibody passes. You are the chief diplomats of four countries. Do you think it's a good idea? Who wants to start? Uh, I think it is a very important uh, idea. In Estonia, uh, our companies have uh, delivered uh, to WHO a proposal of project to have a certain digital immunization uh, card. So basically that digitally you can uh, look uh, after what kind of uh, uh, vaccines you, ha you have had and also if you have passed the de testing of coronavirus, was it negative or not, uh, have, have you had antibodies and so on. And um, so I think for a perspective of, uh, in a way, health security. We are going to speak about that in the future more and more. That, that proposal has, a, I think, immense practical importance. For example, for some years ago, I made a vaccination against book encephalitis. But I, and then I lost the card. Uh, so I, don't, uh, so I, I think easier would be that we have actually digitally that information. Of course, information, uh, personal information uh, controlled only by the person uh, who is owner of information. But it, it gives also possibility uh, to uh, ask for that information if the countries are establishing any kind of restrictions of uh, inter free international uh, the passenger traffic. Well, I always take the advice of health minister and uh, public health experts, and they are very cautious about those passes, as they are very cautious about antibody tests. I think that we are still uh, trying to find many facts about this virus. So from that point of view, as soon as we get vaccine, as soon as the vaccine is efficient, of course, as we do with many other infectious diseases, then certain level of immunization passes would work. Right now, while science is still uh, questioning a lot of things, and if you look at the way how we were developing our knowledge since the beginning of January about this coronavirus, first we saw that uh, only older people are affected, then we saw that actually there are different ways of uh, transmission, and then as we gather information, there are changes. I would say that rather very cautious uh, attitude. We are not introducing in Latvia such kind of passes requiring to to where people are, to have people to enter Latvia, and we still wait for more factual basis on on this one. Well, I, I just make a remark. Estonian proposal is basically a science or information neutral. You can put to that digital pa passport, uh, if it's accepted by WHO, any kind of information which is important for a person or public officials for the health uh, reasons about v vaccination, uh, about Ebola, whatever the, the dangerous diseases or pandemics we would like to address. What is Lithuanian view? No, more cautious, maybe I would share what Edgar just said, uh, because no, questionable is validity, how long it will be valid. Mm -hmm. It's a big question, and also also reliability of this process. And uh, so far, we're looking at that quite, so to say, carefully. <laughs> and in Poland, I agree with uh, the the skepticism concerning quick solution to the problem of pandemic. We need more distance to assess the uh, disease and what measures uh, should be taken. Vaccination would be a solution, but how long will it take? Nobody knows. Everybody has expectations. So we need time and consideration and leave that issue in hands of experts, not quick uh, solution uh, to that problem. Uh, so uh, we should should wait and, and uh, consult that uh, with an uh, expert group I had a chance during Estonian presidency at the Security Council to send questions to the UN Secretary General. 
about situation in the world. And one thing he mentioned in the interview for us was that in the beginning of pandemic, each country was doing things by itself and there was no much cooperation. In Estonia here, remember, there was some issues with Polish border. What, what happened and how it was solved? I agree with the Secretary General that it was the countries who took responsibility and Poland also was responsible for the security and safety of its citizens and there were different reactions. Uh, it depended on quality of the government, also the spread of the disease. So we uh, are in the population uh, um, comparable to Spain, but uh, there is uh, around 1,000 deaths due to the pandemic, due to very restrictive measures at the very beginning. We do, I don't want to blame or assess or consult other governments with a much higher uh, number of uh, people inflicted and also who passed away due to the pandemic. It's up to the country and it is to the citizens of that country uh, in the political process to assess measures taken by the government. But again, Poland, but also uh, uh, Baltic states, Central European countries, they are much better uh, of uh, through, uh, because they were brave enough, the governments, to introduce the measures other followed. So we introduced quarantine, we introduced border control. And I agree at the beginning, at the initial, initial uh, stage, first days, it was a problem with crossing the Polish territory, but then we introduced measures that uh, it, it, we made it possible and they were also uh, groups of uh, citizens from all three Baltic states coming through Polish territory, taking by the Polish uh, uh, lot uh, to Warsaw and then, uh, then to the country. So we started to co cooperate and it is a lesson we learned. Now, as I said, uh, that every, every citizen uh, from these three countries, uh, Lithuanian, Latvian and Estonian, can, can pass in transit Polish territory if they come back or go, go to work. Uh, but there is also a feeling that our measures generally, we, uh, there were some problems, but they were good. They were good because the number of persons uh, affected by the disease is much, much lower than in other countries. Congratulations also to quality of the government in uh, Baltic states. Due to your good reaction, the results are good. So what were other lessons learned during the COVID virus time? about cooperation between Poland, Baltic states, in the European Union in general? I think what is very important also in the very, in, in very tense times, uh, in March and April, the past, basically uh, the cooperation was basically non-stop. We had actually between each other very intensive talks. Uh, so foreign minister's duty is to find out, to work out solutions to cooperate with other state institutions in our countries. And uh, 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 we uh, gradually uh, worked out practical solutions. So we, we, we were together uh, carry out some deliverables. There were challenging uh, moments, but I think very important is that actually during that crisis, look the, from the perspective, we have helped everybody, each other, in that sense. Indeed, as you mentioned, from uh, lot fl from lot flights, we have uh, got back uh, our exp uh, our citizens making uh, expatriation uh, flights uh, using Air Baltic uh, uh, with Lithuanian friends, uh, many issues. So these are actually shown that uh, in uh, harsh times, you feel also the importance of uh, neighbors. Uh, of neighbors. And the second element, I think it is like a, a larger perspective. In that grand uh, crisis, when the nations are facing uh, such uh, tremendous uh, uh, problems, uh, still the core entity of the responsibility is a nation state uh, to, to work out the solutions. Of course, it's very important of the countries to cooperate uh, together in that mess. Uh, um, 
uh, also European Union, uh, international organizations level. But I think uh, we have also seen that no international organization or no any kind of political thinking uh, concept uh, or international uh, uh, business uh, structure could replace uh, uh, such entity as nation state. Latvia, lessons learned. Well, first of all, I think that we all understand that we need more European coordination when it comes to ensuring single market working. We had at one point a situation where I was really afraid that necessary goods will not get through borders. And I think that uh, we need to have more EU coordination where EU policies are. And this was not the finest star of EU. However, that was the finest hour of EU when it comes to repatriation coordination from uh, all around the world. Also very much echo what uh, Urmas has just said, repatriation and our cooperation with Poland, with Lithuania, uh, with Estonia, uh, thanks to our Polish friends, especially outside of EU. Our Lithuanian and Estonian friends also were providing a lot of uh, possibilities to cross the territory or also Flights and vice versa. Our Air Baltic was actually conducting a lot of repatriation flights uh, from Europe and also from outside of EU. And finally, uh, yes, I do agree that uh, uh, there are always uh, clever thoughts after the crisis is over. Then we are all providing a lot of uh, good advice. But one thing which is absolutely clear, I think that uh, we need uh, in future still to get more information sharing uh, capability to both to EU and also we need to reassess how the World Health Organization worked. I'm not calling to withdraw from WHO, but I think that uh, analysis post-COVID uh, is desperately needed because I still remember January, February, we got a little, a little bit false sense of security that all of a sudden ended. And Lithuanian lessons. Well, agreeing to what was said, but just uh, obviously that we, we, when we started, when everything started, we uh, undertook individual national measures. So, uh, strength of the European Union when we have European solutions. There were no European solutions, no coordination, and definitely we have to take it very seriously if something else will uh, be repeated. So, exactly what we're trying to do, at least in this region, but it should be uh, Europe wide. Also, just to mention, there are already clear that uh, there are some economical challenges as well. And I have in mind supply of uh, critical this equipment uh, and protection, uh, you know, and whatever, even medi me medicine. Uh, uh, and uh, there are concentrated in this big quantities in China, in India. And it looks like we have no own capacity. So we definitely have to, as European Union, invest more into research and development also to encourage industry uh, dealing with these issues because otherwise we'll be again facing the situation which is which is not not welcome at all so uh, there should be more uh, time in order to draw lessons uh, but uh, some i just mentioned already and we really should look at that very seriously the european cooperation was of course a big topic but let's focus on one aspect of that rail baltic during the pandemic there was time in estonia where Rail Baltic was discussed also, and the question, is it coming? Is it coming, Rail Baltic, between us, from Tallinn to all the way to Berlin through Warsaw? Okay, can I start? <laughs> <laughs> because uh, good news, uh, you know, uh, during this repatriation uh, mess and uh, efforts uh, to help our citizens, uh, first uh, rescue operation uh, by railway was organized exactly because of uh, Rail Baltic. It was train going from Frankfurt order to Kaunas, bringing our citizens a special train, and that's exactly this route was used. Mm -hmm. So this is serious, so it's moving, and uh, we still, I believe we all all sharing views that this is, this is uh, one of our priority projects, and uh, all these uh, pandemics and other challenges just uh, emphasizing that need. Latvia. Money is coming. The Rail Baltic should follow. I think that we all understand the importance of this. We all understand that as big projects, there are many issues that need to be solved, both political and also economic. But I very much 
agree with Linus, uh, we have seen that we need to have more connections with other European countries, especially if all of a sudden we need to close, for instance, all incoming out, outgoing flights. So from that point of view, in Latvia, government is fully supporting. I'm very happy to see that in the new multiannual financial framework uh, proposal by the Commission, there are funds earmarked. But of course, we need to sort out some differences. And you know, when you have three countries working, then of course, some of management issues get very tough. But I'm absolutely convinced that we need political will to resolve them. And I hope there is going to be that will. Estonian. I think uh, now we have made uh, two great steps uh, forward. The one step is indeed uh, that in real life we have uh, seen the uh, utmost importance in our, I would say, Baltic Peninsula, in that sense, uh, importance of uh, good connections, that actually connections could be very fragile uh, in, in, in times. And secondly, what is of uh, utmost uh, importance is that a brand new uh, proposal from European Commission, uh, the MFF uh, package uh, together with crisis uh, portfolio also, gives, I would say, as a, 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 a clear mandate that uh, uh, it is also backed by financial resources in that way as we were uh, hoping uh, in the mood starting uh, or launching that uh, project together. And I think from Rail Baltic, there are uh, many winners. Uh, I think uh, strategically also Poland has a lot of to win for that connectivity. Uh, also in a larger perspective, Finland, other countries. <coughs> and Polish view. No, we are very much in favor in developing this rail from Baltic states further to both German and maybe also to the Southern Europe. We invest in modernization uh, our, of our part of that. It is seen within the broader also framework of the 3Cs initiative, which should concentrate and it's being concentrating on infrastructure. Uh, so uh, also uh, Rail Baltica, we call it uh, also Via Baltica, but also Via Carpathia farther to uh, Central Europe and uh, so Southern, Southern Europe. In the European Union, uh, relations and ways and inter interconnectivity between West European countries also in the, um, the east-west directions are quite uh, well developed. What we are lacking, this interconnectivity in the north-south dimensions. Also between uh, Poland, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, and then Hungary, Romania, these countries lack uh, this uh, good uh, railways uh, uh, or also uh, routes and also also it refers to uh, pipes to, to possibility to transfer energy resources and so on so inner interconnectivity is, is crucial uh, energy security of Baltic states is also very important and Poland contributes to that. We work on uh, providing and uh, plugging the countries to the European Union energy system in order to guarantee the energy security to these countries. And uh, one big topic I would like to introduce here and short answers maybe. Estonia had its big global, first big global event during our month in Security Council about World War II. And some people were saying that during COVID, why to discuss World War II? I started to notice this topic in Russian media. I was a correspondent in Moscow in December when President Putin three times started to discuss the World War II and Poland was always mentioned as, as one of the actors in the start of war. So, in your opinions, why we still have to discuss World War II? No, it is because in contentious issue, it is raised by the Russians in order to, in our opinion, uh, to legitimize current policies. So kind of a uh, reinterpret histor history uh, of ribbentrop molotov Pact, for example, which was the beginning for us of the Second World War. So we, Poland was uh, invaded by 
the German army and two weeks, three weeks later, 17 days indeed, 17th of September 39 by Russian armies and we were uh, controlled, occupied by both countries. So we have to uh, remember about that and of course it was also an important period for uh, all the Baltic countries so we cannot allow the interpretation of the history. Putin uses it as, uh, to, to attack the countries, but indeed I think that uh, through that discussion the public opinion uh, uh, understands that. We have to protect ourselves uh, against this disinformation campaign and we already talked today about further attempts by Russia to do that. It is also to divert the interests of the Russian society uh, to, to that history. So we have to defend the truth about the, the beginning and the, uh, and the Second World War or, and what, what happened afterwards. Uh, we remember that our countries were, we were not fully sovereign, Poland, but the, uh, uh, Estonia, and Lithuania and Latvia were part of the Soviet Union, not because the uh, societies elected that way, but because they were simply occupied. And we will support that narrative and we have to defend the truth. No, Molotov, or rather, spirit of Molotov, still alive, looking for his own ribbon drop these days. And unfortunately, this division of borders and annexation of Crimea, occupation of 20% of territory of Georgia, it happened recently, 2008, 2014. And this is something what they desperately need to legitimize, I agree with Jacek. And that's why they are trying to whitewash history. Uh, try to again to legitimize the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact. Uh, again, hero, uh, to make a hero from personality of Stalin, for instance. And this is uh, becoming even more intensive. This propaganda is very well financed. So, why we definitely have to discuss these issues, to, not just to compare notes, but trying to withstand. And this discussion, I already said that we really congratulate Estonia with the active participation in the UN Security Council and this area uh, format uh, meetings, uh, they're not official, uh, no, no official statements or, or, or decisions were made, but publicity was very important. And we have to continue in the same uh, pace. Uh, we, we definitely have to, to, to do more. And now there is emerging more than 10 countries coalition, so to say, uh, dealing and fighting with this propaganda, uh, not just Baltic states, not just Poland, but also UK, also United States. And this is important. So our, our capacities and powers are not equal because machine of Kremlin is uh, better financed. So we need to, need to, to, to be even more, more active in this regard. And uh, this meeting, you mentioned, uh, not the last one we would uh, like to have and definitely will continue. It's very difficult to add to what already has been said. I very much agree with both my Polish and Lithuanian colleagues. Let me just say that it is very important to remember that this is not about so much history as about present situation and the future. And if we are now seeing attempts to justify the policy of spheres of influence, actually the diplomacy that has been rather criminal and also what we are seeing in the 21st century Europe, uh, like the illegal occupation and annexation of Crimea or Eastern Ukraine or what happened already in 2008 in Georgia, then we see that uh, to some extent by trying to justify the actions of Soviet diplomacy of 1930s, 1940s, uh, the current Russian leadership is paving the way to the future aggressive moves. And I think that's the most important thing. To that end, I very much want to thank Kurmas and the Estonian Foreign Ministry for putting this on the agenda of Security Council informal meeting, but still I think the attendance of, uh, I think not dozens, but more than 30 or 40 even foreign ministers, 50. that is 50. <laughs> that is, well, I, I, was, I was somewhere at the beginning of the list, so I didn't see probably all of them, but, uh, but actually that showed that uh, Estonia was able to mobilize a really, truly great group of countries and, and foreign ministers. It's not that you see very often in UN Security Council, especially in formal meetings. And the last word of our half an hour discussion goes to the host today, Estonian Foreign Minister 
And this question is the same. The Second World War today. Of course, uh, the event we arranged in Security Council was not uh, an academic, uh, historic one. Edgar's promptly uh, rightly mentioned that, uh, as Orwell said, uh, this who controls the present controls past, who controls past uh, controls the future. So it is actually the issue about who controls uh, the narrative of present. I would it's a, a false narrative uh, of aggressor state, uh, keeping and uh, justifying its aggressions, or is it a rule of law based uh, narrative which is based on historical truth facts? And I'm glad that also with good remarks of my colleagues present here, uh, I think the uh, very clear message of uh, true narrative uh, passed uh, through. And um, so it was uh, the, in the International Fora the highest, uh, highest. Uh, Mm, commemoration of the uh, end of the Second World War in Europe, and we decided also that we are going to print it also as a uh, book, and I will give a pres uh, as present it to all my colleagues. The photos of those uh, yeah. photos of you will be also there. Thank you. Oh, personal thank you. autograph. Very well. important. Yes. yes. <laughs> and on that note, I would like to thank you all. Thanks our viewers. That's all time I have, and enjoy your nice spring day in Tallinn. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.